Welcome to our lecture online and our next topic in thermodynamics is the, is the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. This is the distribution of the velocities or speeds of molecules in any environment, for example in the room or in a box, doesn't matter where it is, this is going to be the way the speed of the molecules are distributed. Now here's the equation that describes this curve and before you turn off the video and go, I am not going to understand that, hang on for just a moment, it's not really that bad. It is kind of a mean equation and the people, Maxwell and Boltzmann, who devised this equation, they were very smart. It's an amazing feat of uh, physics that they were able to figure out how that distribution can be mathematically mapped. But for our purpose, we just need to understand three different velocities among the velocities of the molecules in, in a box or in the room. One is called the RMS, or root mean square velocity, and I put the equation up here already. We figured that out in a previous video, so if you want to go look at that video to figure out how to find the RMS velocity, there it is, and how to use it. That's the one we typically use for most of our calculations because the RMS velocity is really the representative velocity of all the molecules in the box. The effect that the molecules in a gas have on, let's say, the walls of the box like in uh, the amount of pressure they uh, put on the walls of the box, that can be calculated when you assume that all the molecules have the RMS or root mean square velocity. So that's the important one. But there's two other important velocities. One is the average velocity and the other one is the most probable velocity. The most probable velocity is the velocity that the, that the most molecules have. Well, that's kind of misrepresentation. If you take a look, if you slice this up in small little slices like this, and then you look in each one of those slices and say, how many molecules move at that speed, you can go ahead and kind of count those up. And you can see that if you come to the slice that reaches up to the highest point of this curve, then you can realize that more, than, uh, that more molecules have this velocity than any other velocity, and that's therefore called the most probable velocity. And this is the way we figure out what that is equal to. So we take the equation right here and we want to find the maximum point. And the technique to do that is to take the derivative of that equation and set it equal to zero. So before we take the derivative, I want you to look at a couple of things and we're going to simplify the equation so it makes it a lot easier. First of all, take a look at this part of the exponent, e to the minus one half mv squared divided by kt. Now k is that uh, gas constant divided by Avogadro's number, T is the temperature, and one half mv squared, that's indeed the kinetic energy of the molecules. And here we have m divided by 2 pi kt to the 3 halves power times velocity squared. Now what that does is, the bigger the temperature, the lower this graph becomes, because T is, a, is, a, is the number in the denominator, bigger T, it will lower the, um, the height of this curve. Secondly, because the t in here, if t goes up, it will stretch the curve off to the right. So at higher temperatures, it means that the distribution is more widely spread out and it goes farther to the right, meaning they have higher velocities because of higher temperatures. So that's how you can interpret this curve. But we're going to take this quantity right here and call that a constant because everything inside here, if we assume the temperature to be constant, is a constant. So we can write this as the function as of or the function as a, a function of velocity is equal to, call that C1, so this whole thing becomes C1 times V squared times E, and then we're going to call one half M divided by KT a constant two. So it's minus constant two times V squared. And now we have a much simpler equation that only has V squared in it twice like that. And of course we have a product right here and we can very much, well, much more easily, I should say, find the derivative of, it, of this function. So now we take f prime of v is equal to, so we have the first times the second, so we have the first, c1 v squared times the derivative of the second, so since it's an exponential, we repeat that, e to the minus c2 v squared, times the derivative of the, of the exponent, so times a minus 2 c2 v plus the second, which is e to the minus c2v squared, times the derivative of the first, which would be 2c1v. So times 2c1v. 
And now what we have to do with this is set this equal to zero and solve for v. And that will be the v of the most probable, that would be the most probable velocity. Now, before we do that, we probably can simplify things a little bit by factoring out anything that's common. I see an e to the minus c2v squared in both terms. I see a, um, a v squared here, and here I have a v times a v, which is a v squared. And actually, before I simplify it, maybe I should just multiply this out a little bit. So you can, actually, this is part of this term right here. So let me, um, let me multiply everything out, and then you can see how this equation simplifies a little bit. So we have f prime of v is equal to, so multiply this times this, I'm going to end up with a minus 2c1, c2. We have a v squared and a v, that means v cubed times e to the minus c, c2v, e to the minus c2v squared. And then on the right side, we have a plus a 2c1, 2c1v times e to the minus c2v squared. There we go. Now I think we can see that there's some common factors we can pull out. Um, we can pull out uh, this is equal to, we can pull out the 2, we can pull out the C1, so 2C1. We have a V and a V there, so times V times E to the minus uh, C2V squared. This minus should be up here. There we go. And now what we have left, so here we have, we pulled out, we have a C2, we have a minus, so we have a minus, we have a C2 left, we have a V squared left. And over here, we pulled out the 2, the C1, the V, and E, so we have just a plus 1 left. There we go. So there's our derivative. Now to find the highest V, so to find max V, or to find a max function, I should say, max function of V, we set F prime of V equal to 0. That's a common technique in calculus where we to find the highest or lowest point in a function, we simply take the derivative, set equal to zero, and solve for the variable. So we're going to set this equal to zero. So zero is equal to 2c1v e to the minus c2v squared times the quantity minus c2v squared plus one. So for this to be equal to zero, notice that we have a product. We're multiplying this times this. So for this to be zero, either this must equal zero or that must equal zero. Now, for this to equal zero, since we have v times this, v would have to be equal to zero. And yes, indeed, if we let v equal to zero, we have ourselves a minimum on the function. That's the lowest value the function can have. So that's not the answer we're looking for. We're looking for the maximum value. So we're going to concentrate on this portion right here. Let's set this equal to zero. All right, so zero equals uh, minus c2v squared plus one. And so that means that... Um, c2 v squared equals 1 or v squared is equal to 1 over c2 or finally we can say that v is equal to the square root of 1 over c2. Ah, okay, now let's go back and see what c2 was equal to. I made the substitution for this quantity right here. Everything but the v squared became c2. So I'm going to substitute c2 for 1 half m over kt. So coming up here, we have v is equal to the square root of 1 divided by c2, and c2 would be 1 half m divided by kt, like so. And of course, I'm dividing this by a fraction, so I then flip that fraction over, so this is equal to the square root of 2 kt over m. And then, of course, this is r divided by Avogadro's number, and this is the mass of a single molecule. So if I want to then multiply the top and the bottom by Avogadro's number, I can then say that v most probable is equal to the square root of 2rt divided by the molar mass. So instead of using the molecular mass, I use the molar mass. Instead of k, I use r. And here's the equation of the most probable velocity. Now, compare that to what I had over here when I looked at the RMS velocity. It was equal to 3RT over M, and notice the most probable velocity is 2RT over M. So very much related, 
a little bit smaller and therefore you can see that sure enough the most probable velocity is this one right here the RMS velocity is this one right here and as we will see in the next video the average velocity is somewhere between those two values and we'll figure out what that is equal to so if someone says what is the most probable velocity the velocity that has the most molecules traveling at that velocity it is equal to the square root of 2 RT over M and Thanks to Maxwell and Boltzmann, with coming up with this great equation, all we had to do is take the derivative, set equal to zero, solve for v, and there's the velocity. And that's how you find the most probable velocity in the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution of velocities of a gas.